somewhere wild, okay, at the right age. My friends, you all took off at 19 like a bunch of assholes, right? You know any better. No money, no nothing, and you moved all the way to Oregon, you know, Buick Skyhawk, a uh, real pile of crap, and uh, to come out to do this, to be at the top of Mount Baker, snowboard, or Mount Bachelor, or any of these places, right, in the West, as youngsters, and our knees are still good, and still like each other and we're healthy and all that stuff, to move somewhere wild. Now, I went to Alaska for four summers, my first summer up there. I went up there to make cash because, uh, you know, I saw friends in Ben where, where friends and I lived, and they had cash to go buy a big camera rig, and I, I just didn't have that stuff. And instantly, this person's a, a photographer all of a sudden. Well, I had to save my cash. So I go up there to wash dishes, and it's, oh, fuck, I don't know, 16 hours a day for five months straight. And it was horrible, you know, and, and uh, you're in God's country, it's beautiful. But I'm, you know, I'm not there to make friends, I'm there to make loot. And uh, here's a little spirit shot. This is me sleeping on the train. And if you look real close to my lips, some fucker put a mosquito on there. <laughs> Give you an idea what I was doing with the four summers to get the necessary tools to make a living. So, point number three, move somewhere wild, all right? Because, you know, that's, you know the, the, the years are really big to you. Man. Your life is bigger. The colors are, are, are more you know, vivid and you're, you're dumber and stuff, and it's fun. So, point number four, frequent eateries that use decimal points in their menu. Because here in Portland, I can't get, I can't get ice cubes in my glass. There's an upcharge for that, you know, and some kid's going to go talk to the manager. I just don't trust these places that, you know, some asshole encrusted uh, or alien salad is eight. No. Eight ninety nine or no dollar sign, no nothing. Just <laughs> kind of five. No the fucking condiments. All right. I don't screw around with mustard. I don't like shit with seeds, honey in it, twigs, or anything you squeeze out of a tube. Okay. 
of it as yellow as possible. A PMS 109, I think it was. Yellow mustard. Okay, point number six. Get out there and get dirty. This is a bit of a challenge for you guys. So, you live in Portland here, and you guys have cars, and are gainfully employed and whatnot. Get out there and get wild. Right? Get dirty. So, get out there. This is on the extraterrestrial highway uh, across Nevada. Lost as shit, but looking for stuff sort of like this, right? Places, you know, like, like place stuff like this. For you guys, okay? This is for you. Because I'm out there digging in garbage like this with my friends, totally delusional, looking for treasures like this. But, okay? Because, you know, listen, we all know that the heroes of design. We all know the big names in the books, the documentaries, and all that shit. And these guys who were just working a regular job that I'll go into some estate sale on 135th and whatever out there. And all these guys in workshop, and you know this stuff is just dying by the second. People are like, "Oh, you're supposed to die now," and we're losing all the way. So there's like innocence, and it's like sort of a strength to like using one part. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, we're losing these things. We've got a million cars in the field, but these guys, these, 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 these artists, they, they, they were just punching up like ties and stuff. Like so go out there, get there, and find this stuff. Because I've been doing it for years. And then, share what you find. Because I've got flipper sets. Of, I mean, I've been going crazy. I don't make a penny off it. But there's this bigger idea that it's like this weird, cyclical quality of like us rescuing stuff. Now, we rescue stuff for you. Now, your team will rescue stuff for you, right? And this big thing, at least, we caught it before it came in the land for that, you know, melted down the pulp with some direct mail. So share what you find. It's set. Okay? At all costs, work with your friends. Okay? I've been able to devise this incredible little weird scenario where my breath fell. A lot of me have come from on this project with this cast in my basement in 2002 or something. And all these years later, this is my drug and my client. Uh, the idea that we would have been staying at this time. Now we get to the next one. It's like, you know, it's added. It's swept to it. There's no, there's this part I would have liked to see. And as long as there's a million dollars that we can do, these are just the whole thing. And the same building is right. And George and Martina, who have, you know, trusted me with this thing, and this is a little thing, and I'm telling you, you know, I'm just saying that there's a certain span of slice, and it's a big, big thing for this thing. And this is, you know, these are my buddies that we deploy each other's throat. They come down to here for me, from wherever, pants come on, and we close them out, and make stuff. I worked for a snowboarding We We put this in, and we invented this thing for us. I did a couple years of this last year. And these are my friends at the house. They're just like, about, telling the right to be there, or their emails about emails, no, it's not. This fast, serious way to like, get them to pull out there. I know that goes bad sometimes, but it's been super lucky that they just something about it. Okay. Or your tool. Thank you, it exists. Because these are the guys that made me a good And I can't help but learn something every day when I see this. I really can't tell you this. There's something that you can go read or get to try to get help from and go read about something that you can help with whatever. Be thankful for some design. That's what you think about, right? That's how you go to the insurance company. If you pull out some pizza box bill and put it down, and you can figure out what you can read, just think about what you need to do. Just think about what you need to do. Just think about what I just went to the walk park center. I mean, we had 3,000 people, whatever it was. And they were like, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to have to explore it. I'm going to go to the And these are topics we used to go to the park today. I'm going to go to the hotel. I said, we never have fun. You know, we're like all over the nation. It was almost like number 30 or something. 
And then just the next two weeks, it's part of my wherever I'm going to be, wherever I'm going to be. I've got ten lined up in the next couple of weeks. So, I can't wait to put spoke. I love spoke, hey. Hamilton, Ontario? No. What's the take? Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Number 11, smart designers report. He said, any sense of intelligence. Do not follow it. You see the young kids coming through, and they're not going to do it for this price, they're not going to do it for this price, blah, 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 blah. That's why the way the real world is coming in. I work some real shit jobs to get to whatever shit job I want to have. So just leave. Okay. Provide proof. I have a reason to be up here with bona fide graphic art existence with some multimedia. I think we can't get this thing to look up there. Here we go, everybody. I said, London. Some of that stuff may be a little house in 67. So I think about that. I don't know. I mean, I look back. I didn't think I would like that. It's a little bit less than the total. It's going to be too much. Man, good, bad, the other. I mean, that's it. I'm going to do something to put together. It's a good word. It's a good word. Little talk and jokes to them, right? Yeah. You're going to be quite a long time. Not that it's true. Who has a dog out there named um, Bobby or Sadie or Sam, some golden retriever bullshit? Um, because, you know, the dog park and the happy couple with pants that sit down the store and you're walking some big happy dog on the ball. Listen to it. Everybody. All the guys are the dogs. So just know where you guys are at, okay? Think of the breeze. There's all the little Gary dogs. Again, yeah, yeah. a little girl was seven pounds, 19 hours, 19 inches, and there was security at the house. And uh, of course, he was in his mouth, still for mine. And uh, 
dog dogs in the field. So here is this vet who is a vet. A mom said, you know, you're a vet. So you can do it. And that's why I'm going to do it. And that's why I'm going to do it. Lose the clutch. It's a thing that I've been hearing kids right here. They have created Employees, and you can see what's bad. Or see you from the left. Tax collectors, and all the way to the top. What are the dollars? These bastards, they will ride the super steel way to your face, make up turns on the fly that I have no idea what you're talking about, and then try to draft some big email about an email about why the shit's like, listen. Watch out for weather, you guys. I'm just going to tell you right now. Snake oil. Okay. All right, number 18. Pay off those school loans now. Okay. I got three. Find me for I work as much as I could to get that stuff. I got to pay faithfully. Correct? And then made a call. I put a call in. It's like, where am I at? You know, what's it look like? Realize I put so much cash into whatever it was. All that they drain the the man is free. So, clear these things out the best you can. Okay, last but stuff. Number 19. It's not that fun. I mean, it's cool and all, but it's not that funny. It's just too long, it's painful. Done with it? That's fun. I'd be a national treasure right there. But we have some casino around you guys soon, so just, just don't be afraid to laugh and stuff. Okay. Oh, right, man, I embrace this one. Man, turn your back on organized sports. There's a division in my little town between Jocks and the good looking homecoming team and shit. Everybody else. And I, I tried my hand at basketball. <laughs> but. Look at that sweat stain. You know, the skateboarding and, side, you know, and sideways shit, you know, this, this, this saved my life. Because, you know, it, it taught me to sort of like, you know, you can go, you don't have to, it's not about winning some stupid metal man or who gets to, who gets to like be the first place. It's just about all your dudes being in a Subaru going and having a collective good time. And that was something different. Because all this competitive bullshit, and all these years later, these same dicks in my hometown, these, this is being recorded. They were lamenting the past dropped in the fourth quarter still. Eh, whatever, man. So, turn your back in organized sports because there's, there's a whole world of wildness awaiting, you know. But you're probably all too old. Right? I don't know. Pretty good looking crowd, but, you know, this is when I was 20. 20 years old, in fact. Okay. Point number 21. Dream up a plan. I mean, stop. And then figure out how to pull it off. I don't know what that is, but don't be afraid to say, I want to do this in this many years. 
Because my, my partner, Guru, one time told me, you got to get five grand in the bank. I was doing paycheck to paycheck, bullshit, working extra hours with a freelance. you got to get five grand in the bank. When you get five grand in the bank, then you have your rent paid for two years. And that was my plan. I dreamt it up with his advice. I hit it. And that's when shit starts to change. You know, I had to go without for a while. Um, and then go for it. Okay. Number 22. Okay. Let's get cosmic for a second. We'll just chill out, clear your heads, whatever. Right now, right now, we're on a, we're on this thing. I mean, just for a fucking second, just think, put the Twitter down, and just think about this shit for a second. Right now, that's awesome. Float me, you know. And and, and I'm worrying about. Getting round three of this, you know, bike logo off, or, or, or the new record from whatever unlistenable band I love, or whatever. And I've just been really getting down, thinking about like, you know, this. And that in any direction right now is this. I think about this stuff because I forget that there is ten million light years from right this point, this direction is that shit. And who knows what? And you know, most of us are drawing lines over superstitions and whatever part of the world, whatever. This is kind of big. I just don't forget about it. Because you know, I don't know. I I find sort of like this weird, like comfort in knowing that we are a pinpoint within a pinpoint within a sand, not the sand within a you know, a hair and it's inside a hay hay bed. So right now, just think about that for one little second. I do. I, I can. Move myself to tears sometimes because it's like I'm sweating out some real bullshit. So I just try to get cosmic in there. So it's good time. Okay, point number 23, moving right along. Take color theory, color theory very seriously. Okay? When I was in the middle of this, there's a little quote that went something like this. Nothing quite says, I don't quite get it. Quite like cook. I don't use cook for anything. It's the color of royalty. It's the color of sweaters on cat people. Just don't do it. Number 24. Leave a little room for magic. This one goes out to all the account managers in the crowd. You know, bean counters, sweating out 15 minute increments. What a bunch of bullshit. Allow a little magic. And that might mean work until 458. And then figuring out in the last two minutes of the day is the big, the big winner. You know, allow for it. Because I've just learned already that way. Like, the more I try to get smart about this stuff, the more I find myself, you know, reading Facebook shit and stuff, right? And it's, it's dumb. Like, allow magic to come to you when you're, like, drifting off the street. If you feel those next to you, the pen. Magic. Okay? Number 25. Say what you mean, okay? Yes, I'm reading this off this prompt. If you were just checking to see if I got that email, I did. I did. I've got every email since 1994 or something, okay? I just didn't choose to read the damn thing. So just enough of this, like, hey, I'm just checking in, you know? I wonder if you got that email. I got every email. How many times do I have to say that? Say what you mean. Why aren't you answering my shit? And then I'm on the spot. And I can't lie anymore. And I, you know, can you say it to me? The point is, get on vinyl. I like records, man. And for years and years and years, like a dumbass, I bought CDs so I could travel with them. For the last five years of my life, I've been just draining my coffers trying to go get some stupid ass Paul record from 1992 or something. But records, get it on vinyl. Support vinyl at all costs. Okay, here's a big one. Number 27, be ready for when they call you up to the big leagues, man. Be ready. Okay? Now, Mr. Obama got sworn in, and he and I went out there, and we were fans, and it was cool, and then you go there, and we're a mile and a half away, and we got to meet Mr. Blumenauer and the whole deal, and you're there, and you're excited, and people are crying, and, you know, you're there, and you are one three hundred and third one whatever. You're one out of three hundred million. And you feel like that. And how could I get in there to be a designer for the man? You know, how could I help out? Like underneath there, supposedly, there is, there is a, a printing press or something. 
and you're there, and you're checking this stuff out, because you know, I'm a fan of just as low number one. Not to mention the fact, not to mention that he can speak to the world, he's good looking, he's just he's smart as shit, you know, dances with the wife, and he just there's a long, long list that makes him way cooler than that cowboy asshole from you know where from my 26 to 34 years. So I mean, I was just a fan of that. And I was really vocal on my site about my love for this thing because, you know, you're seeing this stuff, you know, rev up and you, and, 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 you know, you, you're you excited and it's, it's, it's kind of like talking to my dad, it's talking to my dad's weirdo Republican buddies and stuff in a different way than some garbage, Sarah Fox, Palin, nightmare ticket, whatever it was. So I get the call to the big leagues, man. I get the call to the big leagues. And it's, it is, it's the guy from Low Project and Buddy Steve out in Chicago. Carl says, we made his logo. We want you to work. Have you heard of the stimulus project? Yeah, I heard about it. I mean, that day, I'm like, you know, on the way in the Volvo, you know, on the NPR, you know, there's Axelrod talking about this $800 billion whatever. And of course, I've heard of this thing. He says, well, we want you to work. So, <laughs> now, at that point, man, shit's got to stop. So I call Mom, and I call Lee, and I call Dale, and Jess, and all my friends, and they say, well, I just got the call. And of course, I'm going to work on this thing. Now, this is a Thursday. And the next morning, Dale and Jess are going to take off the Spokane to go jump. So, of course, I'm going on that trip. But the man called me, and the man called me every word for me. When you, Steve was talking about getting calls. That's why I would call their office in two minutes, and then they would call all of us. That would be me, the first time in this class, a buddy of mine, and it's asked the two of us to come up with this new, these two see loads of uh, stimulus package, and then, you know, this tie goes to all about roads and, and airways and all that stuff. We have four days, so by Tuesday or Monday morning, or whatever it was, this thing had to be ready to go. And we accepted this thing, I would freak. I mean, that day, Thursday or whatever, by the end of that night, I had always sent my first round. He set his off, he just dropped everything, just got it all on film, it was incredible. And like, I can't really show you a lot of that stuff just because I don't know what the law is or whatever, you know. So I, I just can't show it, you know. But a lot of fun stuff sort of got away. I mean, in the end, I was really close to getting it. But this is our experience. You let me get into it. One horse can be fifteen thousand percent on the big screen. I really couldn't think of. I said, you know, it's kind of six stars. Why don't we do eight stars for eight years of trauma? There's a little something for your Fox News. And uh, when you're out there kicking, kicking ass around Portland, you see this thing. Ain't nobody pushed back. You can work on this thing. You know this thing. And in my hometown, Central Lake Michigan, the cover is from Central Lake I mean, they're building a new building. And all those kind of, you know, they, they, they say some pretty rough stuff about it. My president, our president. But it's like, you know, they were mentioned dropping the past in the fourth quarter. And my, my little logo I got to work on, my buddy Chris, in fact, on their big road, bringing them a new road to Central Lake Michigan. This was Tuesday morning. There you go. Yeah. 50 cent phone call. Not bad. And I mean, when I saw this, and I just sat there and cried because it was just like, oh, am I going to get in trouble? Am I? <laughs> Look at Bobby standing there. He's so like, Look at that. So when they call you to go to the big leagues, man, get ready. Just be ready for that shit. You never know. Yeah, I'm 28. You're like back down the road, close to the valley. It's just, you know, I'll get sick of that. Learn an instrument, okay? But there's some rules that go with that shit. Number one, if you pull your bass guitar above your belt buckle, you are a dick. <laughs> Number two, any kind of drummer glove. No. If you find yourself filming a wine glass while you're singing to a bored crowd, quit the national. Yeah. Not too fast. Not interesting, not dark, just a shitty voice, the Pioneer Square, whatever way to stand through that one song. Fun instrument. What's going on? Be the client. 
invent things. They invent things. Be the part. Because enough people bring me something cool and I look at their thing and say, oh, man, you know, okay, what are we going to do? What's the next day? What's the day? And all that kind of brain talk. What could it be? And you can think it up. I can see the sea and lie to get as much as I can. And, and, then, and then it's done. I have to kind of give it back. And then they go and make it great. And that's right, right? And that's what we do. Well, for years and years and years, I collected these things and used them. And I got to this point where I'm going to make my own so screen for my mind. It'll be a, a 2002. I'm just going to lay a little groundwork for Portland's original memo book company. But I'm in field notes simply because I couldn't find two ones I liked at the store. I've been to college. I've been to college for 20 years. And it was a snarky, big soap kind of thing on it, or Hello Kitty, or, 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 or some bad type or something. And I just I made my own, my own bad type, and my own bad copy in the back, and got to, you know, sort of command every stupid little decision from them. The quick pen, to like the gauge of the paper, made all made American, no matter what. Because I send my stuff on a disc to Taiwan, and that's cool and all, but you know, it's a little unnerving it every, every season. Well, I, my buddy Jim Kudal got interested. I dropped a stack of them off to him and we inked a deal with the handshake captains of industry and we started this field notes thing. And all these years, we get 2012, we're putting dots on the map and we have seven or eight employees now and shit is taking off. And it's allowing us to make kind of whatever we want, man. I mean, if it's fall, let's make some fall colors. We made one for every state, just for the hell of it. We lost money like crazy, whatever. Hawaii, Arkansas, but, you know, sold a lot to Oregon and New York State and California, and this idea that if some kid in Arkansas bought a subscription, of, you know, whatever the price it is, he'd get this kick ass thing sent to him in the mail that he was 4 H colors for his state, with his facts, and his stuff. So, you know, we made up every state. So just think about that. We have all this skill set to invent this shit, save a little cash, and invent something, and I'll buy it too, you know. Because, I don't know, we, that's what Jim is really taught me. I mean, Jim, all of his work is, is basically things that they just found out a cool idea and, and believed in themselves and now have these incredible lives and careers and shit because of it. So, yeah, invent things. The stock is black, you guys feel like the feeling of things. Point number 30, go by car, all right? Let's see the country. Landlock, you know, let me say it. Go get your car and drive somewhere, okay? Go buy a car. Number 31. You know what really matters in the end, man? Because I mean, I've had all these years now of working and whatever it takes to make a living. And, you know, this shit shows up. And it's Corey Grove and he and my buddy, man, we're all buddies from forever and saying, Rapping, I've been using the, the fucking G.I. Joe logo. And I got a letter from Hasbro, and I, to my hot dog cart, and I can't, you know, I got I to cease and desist. What do we do? And it's like, okay, wh- wh- how long? How much is it going to cost? You know, what, what, what kind of budget do you have? He has no budget, he has no time, and we make him one of these, man, and it's killer. So we get him out of the legal beagle, and I make my buddy a tool logo, whatever that is, you know. And it's like, I find the time. I was busy that summer. But I find the time to help out my friend because he needs it. He's got this, I mean, it's a kick ass hot dog cart, right? It's a sport. And I take the time to get in there and, you know, start bass that shit up and get every little corner around it. I mean, seriously, test it out there, seriously. And we're making and dreaming up cobra sauce and a cobra card and a, a van and all this stuff. Because here's the thing is like, you know, here it is up at government camp, you know, maybe right now or last summer or whatever. Going to, you know, entitled little rich kids from New Jersey or whatever they're trying to tell us that they're fine. But, you know, he's starting to franchise and stuff all over the West. And this thing is taking off. And this was not about cash. This was about, it was just cool. I want to help my friend, you know? Because, I mean, I know this is being recorded. With all due respect to the shoe company out there to the, to the West, uh, uh, I look back now, all these years later, and it's like, man, what matters? Now, I know that we have to do that. Buy people homes and uh, cigarette boats and, 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 and whatever the, you know these big machine is. But it's like, man, cobra dogs is what I think about on the plane when I'm like 30,000 feet. I'm trying to cry. 
You're up there because you're in front of altitude and elevation. You're large right man in a small seat. Like, I think about cobra dogs, man. That's what I'm proud of. That wasn't about cash or about some big initiative to do groundbreaking work with, like, culture jammers or some bullshit. Like, no, it was, co- it was Corey, man. Corey. So just think about that. Man, that's what, that's what matters. Here's what his mom is. That cool t-shirt ripping off that sure hot shirt. Corey. Okay. Number 32. Buy things made in America at all costs. Do what you can. Do what you can. Pay a little extra. Yeah, there's a title way of coming, you know, back to us. The soul moons and all that kind of shit that's coming back. And be wary of some of those you know, $500 pairs of jeans and shit, but, but buy things made in America. You know? Question stuff constantly. This is just in, just in general, okay? Think about it. Number 34, know who's got the power. Okay, just know who's got the power. Designers making wonderful seasonal shoe stuff that is going to die in six months. I made a little video about the state of the American signage industry, and through my big mouth saying "fuck" fourteen times, five hundred thousand times, or whatever we did, you know, the sign industry has all the power, man. The stuff I make, it's going to die, yeah, in, in, in a year, and we're going to make a new thing. And where are all those catalogs and websites and fucking whatever, fractals and shit? Where's all that shit go, you know? Well, it dies. And then some backyard wrestler, that sign fucker, is out on 82nd, and he wants to get home to throw his buddy a fucking, you know, pick a table with barbed wire and glass, and that day he just kind of skimps on the job, and that signs up for fucking 25 years, man? They have all the power. So when you see a sign maker, this is what I want. Hug them. Tell them they have the power. So otherwise, we're just going to keep polluting shit with bottom line, horse shit, half ass solutions, whatever. So know who's got the power. Right? Collect cool shit. Right? Hoard it, whatever. Collect cool shit. We're getting ready to launch the world's foremost memo book gallery, 1,000 or whatever it was, memo books for free. I've been saving these things for years and years and years, and we're finally organizing this thing into a super, you know, museum of online museums feature, et cetera, and this will be a fun little flap on field notes to prove. You know, I've been looking at this stuff for a long time and loving this stuff and loving handwriting and dumb fucking farm corn books and stuff. You know, so collect things. I collect these because I have a ton of them, a thousand of them. Okay, number 36. Grab your social media by the throat. Okay? I stepped back when I, everyone took it on, and I thought, man, look at this shit. Motherfuckers talking about nothing, you know? I'm in traffic. No period. No nothing. And I just took a step back, you know, and I started numbering my tweets, man, because every tweet counts. Okay? Because if you find yourself in the fucking 10,000 plus range, you gotta get a hobby, man. I'm tired of reading fucking play-by-play sports shit. I'm getting ready to cleanse that whatever I follow. Because, man, I'm tired of hearing how fucking yummy your coffee is. Make these things count. It's a tool. Point number 37. Save a little stuff, man. Save a little stuff. Here's an example of some break the mind. We're in some shit hotel. With a big buck of ice, get cold coke from the city ass vending machine down the hall, and you put it in a crappy little foam cup. This is something I've loved all my life. My dad, when I was like five or six, and I was like, get the bucket, go down the hall, get the ice, and come back in there, procure a couple cups, you know, and you know, hotel room coke, man, the little shit, save that stuff. Because I don't know. I think that's like at the end of this, when I die in the wilderness somewhere. I'm going to think about this. I don't know. I love hotel room coke. Number 38. And support your local rock outfits. Oh, I missed it. Shit. I believe in Red Fang, and you should too, man. He's my buddy. And they rip. So go out and buy everything you can get your hands on. Give it to your friends and 
Break the ice with that neighbor you don't know next door to you. With their new record and their old record and whatever. Okay, yeah, Red Fang, everybody, Portland, Oregon. Okay, number 39. Kind of understand and challenge and wonder about all the shades of professionality, okay? Because, is that even a word? No. Because professionals sometimes, they'll wield that shit at me like a knife. And I will kick their ass with cleaner emails, with punctuation, with being on time, with overexceeding. And then they'll hide behind the professional status, whatever the hell that means. So just know what all that means. Don't be afraid, you know, to, to prove yourself and be professional. But then be careful of letting shit get unplugged. Because I've watched it get unplugged fast. And then someone hide behind, you know, a bunch of fucking small copy and then under a team. So, I don't know. I'm just weary of this. I'm, I'm, I'm wary and weary of this sort of like, wow, I have a title now. And I'm going to kick around the kid underneath me. Don't do that shit, man. Be careful with all that. I'm 40. Don't worry about awards, man. I've never won one. I've never tried for one. The dinner's cool and all that shit, but don't worry about that shit. No one cares. I mean, just, you know, whatever. But if they invite you to an award show to go judge, absolutely take them up on it. Go there. Go to the hotel. Use every towel, every soap. Eat like a champion the whole time you're there. And then give away a ton of awards to Albuquerque, man. Fuck it. Let them have a big party, man. Whatever. But don't worry about awards. Number 41. It's 2002. That, come on, you gotta quit saying the word dude. You know, I've been dude free since 2002. Let that shit be reserved for your uncle, my dentist. Hey, dude, we're getting a crown, you know. <laughs> Print reps, and then Spicoli. Just that's theirs, man. I don't live on the beach enough already. Before you make big ass, thick ass posters. And then throw a shit whack a little thing. So at the end of this show, you guys in cut rate Portland only prices, get your ass up to that viciously stocked merch table for some, some gear. And the 42, make big posters. Okay? There it is. You ever seen that thing? And the 43, go pantless. I take my pants off. I. My shop, I pay for the place. I don't wear pants. <laughs> well, um, invest in some sweatpants. I like sweatpants. Put the fuck out of Target. Put the bombs off for a modern fit. <laughs> Inspired by this woman in her hair with a fucking 50 gallon drum of an ass. Freaking out because she was trying to get back to Okaboji or Bemidji or, or Nagani or wherever she was trying to get to. And she couldn't get there on Christmas Eve and she's going crazy and just had the most majestic ass of that. Man, sweatpants, everybody. Number 44. Point number 44 to, to ruin your career, right? It's going to be some uh, get free and you need to get free. I know it sounds a little weird, but, you know, whatever it takes, man, I, I love my jobs. But there's sometimes, man, that's like, stop myself. I'm doing this because there's a carrot on a stick. And how much do I need to do? How much do I need to live and make it important and thrive and take care of myself and the one and family and friends or whatever? I mean, sometimes you don't feel free, but get free and try something, whatever it takes. So at 38 and a half, I've got about 19 months and you know, 40 if I even make it, then I'm going to quit. I don't know what that means, but you know, check in with me. Number 45, point number 45. I think the UPS guy, the mail lady, and that printing press man, that they have gold, okay, that they have gold. Win them over, and your life will become that much better. Give them some cool shit. Give them some cool advice. Give them something cool, whatever. Win them over, and don't get more of that. Just long enough to go in with some whatever and see them kick these people out. It's not cool, man. We are right there with you know, the people that make the cool things that we are lucky to them. So, here's my goal. Know what you love, number 46. My mom. I love my mom. Proof shot. Thank you, Travis, for your listening. I love my dad. Action shot. I have a family. I love my family. Okay, know what you love. I love Lee. Thank you, Lee. 
I even love my almost brother-in-law, Jacob. <laughs> little nephew Oliver up there. I love little Oliver. For the first month of his life, I would hold him and start to cry. Why am I crying so much? <laughs> I would hold him. Just look at those teeth. I'd hold him, and I would look at that littlest pinky, and I'd start thinking about how we're a rock in, the, in space, and my little sister and Jacob made this beautiful little family uniting little creature, and I don't think he would throw up or something, but I mean, it's just, you know, little Oliver, you know, I love little Oliver. Dale, love Dale, all right? First of the football, heart of the lion, does all the shipping for the DDC and does the shipping and then some shipping. So there's Dale Allen Dixon, pride of East Lansing, Michigan. The man, love the man, believe in the man, I believe in him. <coughs> My favorite band of all cosmic time are the goddamn motherfucking flaming lips from Oklahoma City. Because they won me over in about 91 or 92 when they were nothing. And they were living in vans and going and doing shows, spending all their money on confetti and shit. And all these years later, these dudes are brilliantaires. And it's just as cool as it was then, as it really, when it grabbed me in 91, and those five or six records from the guitar period, if you will that are mine or yours or ours and stuff. Love the Flaming Lips, the American story. And over the years, I've done a little wine, get myself backstage just for brand building purposes, and uh, got to meet the man in the band and realize that these are just dudes just like us. They are just people that are creative and have some guts, and there's some really good DNA there. Aside from all the fucking songs about space and, and the fucking the giraffes and shit, whatever, okay? <laughs> Love the flaming lips. And don't forget about all the shit that you hate. Because as you climb Dickhead Mountain to the very top of Asshole Peak, it's Kid Rock. <laughs> I'm from Detroit. And this is what we got back there. The latest and the greatest, singing for, for Mr. Romney. Man, I mean, yeah. the best by the bestest, and business is good. Testosterone implants, changes with every little, you know, he's a, he's a rapper, and then he's a new metal guy with the umlau, and then he's a fucking, you know, some country boy, he's gonna bomb Iran or something. That could rock. Your father wore leather shoes, had a little respect, all right? Your grandfather wore leather shoes, all right? Enough of the beef skin. Be careful, you guys. This one's not fun. Because this is the hand of the horse. So you're digging around up there. And you're kind of, hey, you're kind of buzzing into it. You're kind of wondering, oh, it's kind of sleeping. She's going to bite. She's going to bite you off. That's the right Be careful. I think this guy. You take some aging jock who would have been kicking my ass back when I was a skateboarder. And you dye his hair, and you put him in a bowling shirt, and some shams, and some stupid skate shoes, and, you know, who mixes silver with gold, right? I mean, it's just, the list goes on and on, man. This guy, I hate this guy. I want like to Hey, it's my man. I'll do what I want. I hate people who say woo-hoo. Enough. This is just an anonymous guy pushing away and hanging out at expensive coffee shop. Garbage. All right. We're going to relax. Okay. Point number 48. Learn to roll with the good, the bad, and the real ugly shit, too. Okay. Now, I mean, the young designers are looking for it. Well, what am I going to get a job? What's it going to be like? Right? And he's going to tell them that they've got some good degree in the world. And he's going to get something to happen. And they get some good of it. And make it work. And make the coffee. And take it on the chair. And have the guy bring you in on Saturday. And you can bring it to the inside. Do that for a while. 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 
take this seriously. And I'm not going to do it. Learn and look to sort of love others. Before you know it, we're part of the love that seems like it's way out there. I've been working on it. And it's not so much. I mean, if it did, it would still be good. It's just something about it. I don't know that. Take to do this stuff. I never forget that. It's like the worst of the worst. I've got to think about it. We need to know this. It's great to be able to touch on it or whatever. But it didn't like what it's going to be. I dug this is for a whole summer. I lost this is for five or four summers. I got a bonus in some submission to the truth. I had that straight job, and none of it compares to sitting on the ass while they're quitting the mouse. So remember that shit, you guys. Love this shit. Even though I've quit complaining about, like, oh, I'm going to make a change. I'm not going to make that change. You're the principal. Fuck all that. You are on the clock. Do the job. Get the door. If they want to make a lemon, let them make a fucking lemon, man. When you're done with work, go home and invent some field work. So you need a fear of control. So know that the person will. All right, for now. I think you can take it for me. You guys are not this mess. Thank you guys for giving me, you know, I don't know, it's a weird sense of like you're here and it's cool and you showed up here and I'm going to kick your ass right in the face. So thank you for it. 